make a name for themselves. You know what I'm saying? I'm keep trolling. Yeah. Trolling? You know, trolling? Man, you know that. It's never been a secret that the beef in the rap game tends to get pretty heated. Competition is stiff, and greed and jealousy often ruin friendships between people who used to consider themselves brothers. From lost followers to death, the impact of these beefs can be felt for generations in the industry. It happens at all levels, too. It's not just the guys at the top. Rappers are hungry people, and when other rappers get in the way of their grind, the consequences can be disastrous. Today, we're going to check out seven of the scariest beefs in the game. Number seven. Drake and Pusha T. Drake is one of the biggest rappers in the world right now, and that's a place he's occupied for a long time. Like him or not, the dude has some serious staying power. On the other hand, while Pusha T gets respect, he's not quite on the same level of fame. Now, kind of the reverse is the case when we look at street cred. Drake doesn't really bang, and he doesn't act like he does. On the other hand, Pusha T raps about the streets all the time. While it might just be a character, no one calls him out for it. Meanwhile, people make fun of Drake all the time for getting his start as an actor on Degrassi. Aside from all that, it seems like Drake and Wheezy screwed Pusha T out of some money when they got a clips feature way back in the day. Things just got worse from there. Maybe the worst of the whole beef is that Pusha T announced to the whole world that Drake had a son he had been keeping a secret. As a result, Drake's been a lot more vocal about his son instead of keeping him hidden away. Honestly, maybe it's a good thing that Push did that. At the end of the day, it made Drake a better father. That being said, things could have gotten a whole lot worse from here. It's just good that they didn't. In terms of collateral damage, the worst thing this beef did was the beef between Kanye and Drake that went on for years, but it really doesn't go much further than that. There have been threats and things like that, but no one's made any serious moves aside from a crazed fan or two. Number 6. 50 Cent and Ja Rule The beef between 50 Cent and Ja Rule is one of the best known beef in the industry. Everyone and their moms have heard about this one, but a lot of people don't know just how serious it's gotten. Even to this day, we still don't know exactly what happened that night at the club, but afterward, 50 Cent and Ja Rule would eternally be bitter enemies. The whole claim is that Fiddy, or one of his friends, robbed Ja Rule of some jewelry. Ja Rule said it was because Fiddy didn't like seeing him get love from his fans. At the hit factory, Ja Rule and Fiddy got into it, and Fiddy ended up going home with stitches. The IRS also released documents about Murder Inc., Ja Rule's crew, and their connections to a drug lord in Queens. Apparently, there was a big hit out on Fiddy for rapping about things the public wasn't meant to know. Fiddy Cent ended up getting shot at in 2000, and he survived. Every Everything was dormant for a while, but back in 2018, Ja Rule called Fiddy out on Twitter. To retaliate, Fiddy decided the best course of action was to buy out all the first four rows of seats at one of Ja Rule's shows, meaning he had to play to tons of empty seats. Pretty savage, honestly. While there's a history of some pretty aggressive stuff here, it's likely that the beef is pretty much dormant for now. Number 5. 6 9 and basically everyone Now, you already know we can't talk beef without mentioning 6 9 The dude has been in everyone's business, and the thing is, we can't say it isn't a valid strategy. As awful as it is, it makes sense. If you're going to go down for snitching, what else do you have left than to just become the most hated man in the industry? So he ended up lashing out at pretty much anyone who's anyone from Trippy Red to Justin Bieber and Ariana Grande. The worst of the beef, though, was probably the one he decided to start up with Chicago drill rapper Chief Keef. The whole thing started because of drama surrounding the rapper Cuban Doll. Apparently, she had a relationship with some people from Chief Keef's crew, and they weren't very good to her. 6 9 was on good terms with her, so the two of them got together to taunt GBE and Glow Gang. Eventually, they ended up taking a trip to Hawaii together and cruising around an O Block just to stir things up. To make matters worse, after all this went down, 6 9 ended up linking up with Chief Keef's ex, who was the mother of his first son. He took her down to the Gucci store, captured it all on video. He spends the whole length of the footage basically just trying to rile Chief Keef up. <laughs> you a big fan of Chief Keef? Oh, yeah. No. Yeah, I like Chief Keef a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing really came of this whole thing, probably just because 6 9 is probably one of the most heavily guarded dudes in the world right now. A lot of people aren't too happy with him. Number 4. N.W.A. and Ice Cube This is maybe one of the most legendary beefs in all hip-hop. See, N.W.A. and Ice Cube didn't really see eye to eye all the time. Eventually, things got really bad between the whole group. While Ice Cube took shots at everyone, it seems like he had the biggest issues with Eazy-E and Dr. Dre. The issue started because, according to Ice Cube, their manager and Eazy-E, who founded Ruthless, were underpaying him. Easy e and Jerry Heller haven't ever really spoken on the whole thing, but before they knew it, Ice Cube left N.W.A. and went solo. Meanwhile, the rest of N.W.A. were still more or less one unit, working together. Dre and Snoop Dogg started collaborating on a few tracks. There were lyrics directed right at Ice Cube, calling him out for ditching the group and whining about pay. Eventually, Ice Cube decided that he had enough and released No Vaseline. The track is over five minutes long, 
and in each verse, he goes in on a different member of NWA, even deciding to drag their manager into the diss. The whole situation never really got violent, but the issue is that a lot of the dudes in the crowd at the time were actually about gang life. Dre wasn't ever really into it, but Easy e it's a whole different story. Number three, Dirk versus Rondo. Lil Dirk and Rondo's beef runs deep, and it has the potential to be one of the deadliest beefs on the list. The issue all stems from the fact that Dirk's close homie found himself in a pretty rough situation. See, Quando Rondo and King Von used to chill way back in the day. There are even videos of the two of them together. Eventually, something soured along the way, taking place entirely behind the scenes. A few years later, back in 2020, Vaughn was down in Atlanta, where Quando lives, doing a show. After the show, for some kind of after party, they all went down to Monaco Hookah Lounge. Eventually, Vaughn slipped off and found Quando Rondo sitting in his car, sleeping. He started a fight and tried to throw hands with Quando when Lil Tim stepped out. Lil Tim was sticking up for his homie and ended up shooting King Vaughn, although he also sustained a wound. Pretty much ever since, Quando and Tim have been on a mass disrespect, pretty much constantly talking about how it was self-defense and that Vaughn shouldn't have pulled up on him like that. Dirk's not really having any of that, and while he hasn't made any big statements, a lot of people think that Dirk has plans for Quando and Tim. Number 2. O-Block and Youngboy and this might be one of the most upsetting beefs in recent memory. Youngboy got into it with Lil Durk over some comments he made about Quando Rondo since Quando was on Youngboy's label and the two of them are pretty close. That's when Youngboy released Bring the Hook, just ahead of the release of his mixtape Colors. On the track, NBA Youngboy basically says that he's coming for blood, calling out the entirety of Oblock. He also makes more specific references to Lil Durk. A lot of people think it might just be a little bit of internet beef for clout, but that might not be the case. See, Youngboy's on house arrest right now, but he's also out on bail for a list of charges that could end up landing him a lifelong prison sentence. If NBA Youngboy really wanted to do something, he could. It just depends on how much he really feels like turning this into something and how much he's just beefing for streams on colors. People went crazy for bringing the hook and definitely felt the heat Youngboy was bringing. One fan said he's going against the whole industry at this point, and I'm here for it. That being said, Oblock wasn't feeling it one bit. A big group of people from Oblock posted a video of themselves stomping on 4KT green bandanas. Number 1. Tupac and Biggie Biggie and Pac were the two biggest names in the game for a lot of the 90s. Along with that came a bitter rivalry that can still be felt in hip-hop today. This just might be the most tragic beef so far. Tupac didn't really come from the streets. He kind of adopted that life later on. But that doesn't mean he was any less real. Tupac and Suge Knight were at a Mike Tyson match in 1996 when they spotted a member of the Southside Crips in the lobby. Those were the ops for Tupac. He and Suge roughed him up a little bit when they saw him. Unfortunately, that would lead to a drive-by that claimed Tupac's life later that night. Now, as far as Biggie goes, no one really knows who was actually behind the reason of this death. A lot of people at the time thought that he was directly related to Tupac's death, since the two of them had ended up in scuffles once or twice. According to most people these days, Biggie had an alibi. Six months later, Biggie was shot in a similar drive-by. A lot of people follow the theory that Suge Knight organized the whole thing as revenge for Tupac, but no one could be sure. If that's the case, it's so much more sad because it's likely that Biggie had nothing to do with it. What do y'all think about these? Did we miss any beefs that you think should have made the list? Let us know what you think down in the comments. And if you're feeling this video, you should for real watch this next one.